Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to Idiot Proof Cooking. So we got a big video today. I am making a ton of things. I'm going to show you how to make carne asada tacos, but everything that goes along with it. So the actual carne asada. Then I'm going to show you how to make the tacos out of masa and pressing it and frying it. I'm going to show you how to make guac, salsa verde, a nice chipotle sauce to put on top of your tacos, and pickled onions, which go good on pretty much any tacos. So we got a lot to cover today, so let's cut the formalities and let's get into it. Okay, so let's start making some carne asada. Now, you'll want to use either flank steak or skirt steak. Either one of those will work fine. Basically like a long, thin steak. Now, what I have here is about two and a half pounds of skirt steak. <laughs> Look at as I unfurl it, they're, they're quite long in length. So the first thing we're going to want to do is cut some of the silver skin off them. It's that chewy membrane on the back side of them and it won't cook properly and it'll leave like a chewy membrane on it that you, you want to get rid of. So cut those off and then now because these are super long I'm going to cut them in half just to make it easier to work with and then you'll want to identify which way the grain of the steak is going because we're going to cut across the grain. That's what you want to do when cutting steak. It shortens the length of the grain and makes the steak more tender and easy to chew and honestly that's what you want to do. So I'm just cutting them into strips about a quarter inch in thickness. That's an easier way to marinate these. Now don't get me wrong, you can marinate them as one whole you know, piece of steak, but I just find it easier to cut them up into strips anyway because that is the end goal. So once they're all cut up, throw them into a Ziploc bag and it's time to start preparing your marinade. All right, so the first thing in the marinade is the juice of two large navel oranges. So I'm just using a little hand juicer here, cutting them in half, and then I'm just going to pour the juices of both of them into this bowl here that I have. Make sure to give the oranges a nice good squeeze. You wanna make sure you get all the juice out of them. So there we go. Next in is the juice of two limes, similar to the navel oranges. I'm gonna cut them in half and use a juicer to squeeze out all of the juices of the lime. It's really straightforward, right? Next in is about a quarter cup of soy sauce. So just pour that in alongside both of your orange and lime juice. And then next in is a quarter cup of a neutral oil, like an avocado oil like I'm using, or vegetable oil as well. Then we're going to add in some garlic. I'm going to use four cloves and just crush it into the mixture as well. Now, like I say in all my videos, you can reduce the garlic if you don't like a garlicky taste, or you can put more in if you wanted more garlicky. I'm using four cloves. Once the garlic's in, it's time to add in some cilantro. I'm using about a three quarters of a cup of cilantro and I'm just dicing it up. Just make sure to dice it up nice and finely. And then similar to the other ingredients, throw them into your bowl alongside everything else. The next thing for the marinade is some cumin. I'm using a tablespoon of ground cumin. And then I'm using a tablespoon of Mexican oregano. I'm gonna throw in a good pinch of kosher salt about a half tablespoon or so, and then some freshly ground black pepper. And the last thing I'm going to use is some chilies in adobo sauce. So I have about six chilies here, and again, I'm just gonna dice them up until they're like nice little bits, and then I'm going to pour them in alongside the marinade very carefully, and make sure to include the juices that they came in. Now this marinade smells amazing, just give it a quick stir, and then it's time to start pouring it in alongside your skirt steak. So pour it in nice and carefully, making sure not to spill any of it. And then it's just time to start mixing it all around inside the Ziploc bag, making sure you have all of the steak covered with it. So just give it a few mixes and then you're gonna seal it up, make sure there's no air in there. Give it another couple of little shakes around, make sure it's nice and covered. And then you're gonna let this sit in your fridge for at least six hours to marinate, but ideally overnight. The longer it marinates, the better it's gonna taste, right? Now while the steak is marinating, let's move on to something else. I'm going to show you how to make a nice chipotle sauce for the tacos. So you're gonna start off with two cups of mayonnaise, but hold on a minute here. I forgot the blade for the food processor. You're gonna need that if you're gonna mix everything together. So put the blade in the food processor and then pour in your two cups of mayonnaise. Now I'm using Hellman's, but you can use another mayonnaise, although I wouldn't recommend using Miracle Whip. I find that to be gross. 
Next in, you're gonna pour in eight chilies in adobo and make sure to pour in the sauce. And then you're going to squeeze in the juice of one large lime. Similar to the lime you used in making the carne asada marinade, just cut it in half and then use your juicer and squeeze it all in. Pretty simple, right? Next in is some kosher salt, a good pinch of that, and then some freshly ground black pepper. You know, just a few twists of it, that's all you really need. And then you're going to put the lid on the food processor and mix this until it's all combined and makes one hell of a delicious chipotle sauce. Like honestly, it is so tasty and it goes really, really nicely on tacos. So once that's done, take the lid off. Let's give it a quick taste test to make sure it is good. Here we go, and yeah, oh yeah, that is, that's fantastic. So really just pour it into a bowl very carefully and then you're just going to let it sit in your fridge covered until it's ready to be used. And now that that's done, let's move on to the next thing we're making, some pickled red onions. So I've got a large red onion here and I'm going to cut it in half because we really only need half of it. So we're going to just cut them into really fine, like really thin strips because that's how you want to pickle them. So just cut them very carefully, very carefully like I'm doing here. And then we're going to stuff them into a mason jar. Now I have this cool skull looking mason jar. I figured that was fitting for the whole taco theme. So anyways, just stuff the red onions into it. You know, you're gonna to wanna to jam them down in. And then it's time to start making the actual pickling brine that we're going to pickle these with. So get yourself out a pretty decent sized pot like I have here and add in a cup of white vinegar. Pour that in. Next in is a cup of just regular old water, similar to the vinegar, pour that in. And then we're going to add in two tablespoons of white granulated sugar and then a tablespoon of kosher salt. Give that a quick mix together and then we're going to throw it on a burner and bring it to a boil. That's really all you have to do to make the pickling brine. It's really easy. Now while that is boiling, I'm going to throw some black peppercorns in alongside the onion. So I have about a dozen or so here. Just throw them in and then we just really wait for the water to come to a boil. Once it has come to a boil, as you can see, it's time to just pour it in very carefully. This is hot liquid after all. Pour it in with the onions. Pour it right to the top throw the lid on it and then really you just let this sit for any length of time you know typically you should let it sit for like a minimum of an hour for it to pickle but you know the longer you let it sit the more it's going to pickle and become really tasty but look at how cool they look in that skull mason jar i really like how that turned out so anyways let these sit and then they're ready to go that was really simple right now now that that's out of the way let's move on to the salsa verde I have here seven tomatillos, a decently sized jalapeno pepper, and a large white onion that I've cut in half. So what we're going to do is cut off the end, the top end of the tomatillos, and then just cut them in half and throw them on a baking sheet because we're going to roast these for a couple minutes. So like I said, just cut off the tops of them, cut them in half, and then we're also going to cut the onion up a little bit. You know, just, I had to cut them in half, but looking at the size of them, I've decided to cut them into more like quarters in order to roast them properly. So once they're all cut up, you know what, let me give that onion one more cut. There we go. Once they're all cut up, you're gonna hit them with some neutral flavored oil. I'm using avocado oil again. And then you're going to throw these under your broiler for about five minutes, just to broil them a little bit, give them a little bit of roasting, just until they start to turn color. As you can see here, that's what they did as you can see the tomatillos have just started to brown a little bit and it really softens them up and adds some flavor to it really from here you're gonna go get either a blender or a food processor and you're going to just pour them all into there so if you excuse me here let me just do this very quickly get them all in to the uh, blender as you can see here the power of editing has sped this up <laughs> So pour them all in. And then I'm going to add in three cloves of garlic. They don't even need to mix them up. And I'm going to use the whole jalapeno, cut it in half. I'm leaving in the seeds and everything for some heat. And then we're going to use some limes, the juice of two whole limes to be exact. We're going to use a lot of limes to make everything today. So if you're going to make this, all of this stuff, get a lot of limes, you're gonna need them all. Once the lime juice is in, get yourself some fresh cilantro. Now I'm using about three quarters of a cup of it and I'm just gonna dump it into the blender and then I'm gonna put in some kosher salt, just a good pinch or two of that, and then some freshly ground black pepper. Do you notice the trend with the kosher salt and black pepper? You put it in a lot of stuff. <laughs> so anyways, fix the lid and then just blend this all together. Really, really straightforward, right? You're gonna wanna blend it together until everything is mixed together, but it still has a chunky consistency like salsa. Like you don't want to be really like watery and like gooey you know salsa typically still has some chunky consistency to it 
So similar to everything else we've made so far, pour it into a container and cover it and leave it in your fridge until it's ready to be used. But look at that, look at how nice that looks and it smells awesome and it tastes quite nice and it's got a, like some nice spice to it with the jalapenos in there. So there we go. Now that the salsa verde is out of the way, let's make some guac. I have three decently sized avocados here, some red onion, uh, lime, a couple cloves of garlic and some cilantro. So we're really just going to start cutting everything up, starting off with the avocados. Cut them down the center with your knife, then use the same knife to pull out the pit, and then just use a spoon to scoop the delicious avocado out of its skin. Pour it all into a mixing bowl like I've done here, and that's the first step done. Next up is to cut up the red onion. So take care not to cut your thumb like I just did. Oh man, oh, that it was a really good cut, let me tell you. So anyways, don't cut your thumb like I did. Idiot-proof cooking, right? But as you can see, I had to band-aid it up because it, it was bleeding pretty good. It was a really good cut. So anyways, finish cutting up your red onions. I'm just rough cutting them here so that they're still pretty decently sized, taking care not to lose any fingers in the process, and then just pour them in alongside the avocado. Next up is you're going to dice up the cilantro, and I'm just going to cut it up nice and finely. Once that's done, you're just gonna throw it in alongside the avocado and onions, and then it's time to deal with your garlic. Now I'm using two cloves of garlic, which is surprisingly not a lot of garlic for me, but then I'm just going to crush them up and throw them in alongside everything else. And then it's time to add in some lime juice. I told you we're gonna use a lot of limes today. So I'm going to use the juice of one whole lime and just squeeze all of that in, there we go. And then I'm going to add in some kosher salt, a good pinch of that, and some freshly ground black pepper. From there, you're just gonna go grab a fork and mash the avocado. I like to leave a little bit of chunkiness still to it, but you can mash it up till it's smooth. And then just mix everything together and give it a quick taste test to make sure you like it. And oh yeah, that, that's really good. So similar to everything else so far today, cover it and throw it in the fridge until it's ready to be used. Now that the guac's been dealt with, let's make the corn tortillas to make the actual tacos. So get yourself out a decently sized mixing bowl and pour in two cups of masa harina, which is corn flour. Pour that into the bowl, and then you're going to add in a good pinch of kosher salt. I'd say about a teaspoon of it. And then we're going to slowly pour in one and a half cups of hot water. I'm slowly pouring it in and just incorporating it with my wooden spoon here. You're basically just going to mix it with the wooden spoon until there's no like pools of water left. Once that's done, it's easier to just discard of the wooden spoon and then start mixing this and kneading it by hand. It's just way easier that way. So get your hands in there and just start kneading this for about three to five minutes until there's no dry masa left and you can form this into a nice smooth dough ball. Once that's done, just form it into a ball with your hands, throw it in the bowl and cover it with a tea towel or plastic wrap and let the masa hydrate for about half an hour. Once that's done, uncover it and we're ready to start making our tortillas. Now I bought myself a tortilla press off of Amazon and I'm pumped to try it. Like, look at this cool little thing. This is the thing you use to make tortillas with. It was like 40 bucks. If you're gonna make a lot of corn tortillas, I would highly recommend buying it. So first thing you do is lay down a sheet of parchment paper. Then you're going to break off a little bit of your dough and you're going to form it into a ball, just knead it in your hands until it's about the size of a golf ball, like that. Look at that. All right, then throw it on top of your parchment paper, then put another piece of parchment paper on top, close the lid, and then press it down nice and hard. It's really easy. And then there you go. You got yourself a corn tortilla. Look at that. Look at how awesome that is. And look how easy that was. It's actually pretty fun to do too. Look at that. That's so fun. <laughs> So anyways, you just repeat that process, you know, keep forming little balls of dough in your hand and pressing them down and you get a bunch of corn tortillas out of that. I'm so glad I bought this thing. But anyways, once you have all of your corn tortillas, as you can see here, I have a decent snack of them. It's time to go into the kitchen because we have to fry these quickly. So into a large frying pan, throw it on your burner on a medium heat and give it a couple minutes to heat up. Once it has heated up, it's time to throw down your first tortilla and you're going to fry them just for about a minute per side. So once a minute's gone, flip them over and give it another minute. It's really straightforward. Once the second minute's up, pull it off and just repeat the process for the amount of tortillas you have. There we go. And there's my last one. Look at how picturesque that looks. 
And there we go, we have a stack of tortillas. Look at those pretty things, oh man. That was pretty fun to make, and those were really, really easy. But now that the tortillas are out of the way, let's get this pan out of the way and bring in the large cast iron pan because it's time to start cooking the carne asada. So throw this on a medium heat and give it five to six minutes to heat up because cast iron takes a bit of time to heat up. Once it is heated up, throw in some avocado oil or vegetable oil, again, neutral flavored oil, and then it's time to just start throwing in your marinated steak strips. I let mine marinate for about seven hours. Now I have about two and a half pounds of them, so I can't cook them all at once, so I'm doing it in about three different sessions. And so I threw in about a third of it, and I'm going to fry them for about one to two minutes per side because they are pretty thin. And then once they're cooked, I'm just going to pull them out and throw them in a bowl here and start cooking all the rest of it. Give you a quick close-up shot here. Look at that. And then I'm just going to repeat the process. Pour another batch of the carne asada into this piping hot cast iron skillet and cook it for about one to two minutes per side until it's all cooked. There we go, look at it all done. I'm gonna take a quick bite of it here because it smells amazing and yeah, no, it's awesome. So let's go assemble these tacos. Alrighty, so here's the carne asada. Look at all of that. And there are my corn tortillas. So I'm going to pick out two tortillas here. Just take the top two of them here. I'm going to make two tacos. And then I'm going to start off with a base layer of guac. So just give you a quick close up shot here. It looks delicious. So spread some guac on both tacos. I'm going to put a fairly decent amount on. I do like guac. And then once that's on, it's time to throw some carne asada on top of that. So I'm just going to throw a couple of strips of the steak on, you know, three or four per taco. I do have to save some for Meg and Rose to eat after all. <laughs> then once the steak is on, it's time to add some pickled onions on. Look at how gorgeous and red that got. I let them pickle for about like six, seven hours. So I'm going to put a pretty good helping of pickled onions on both tacos. I particularly like pickled onions. They, they're really nice tasting. So I'm going to put a good amount on and then it's time to add some cheese on. Now I'm using feta. The reason why I'm using feta is because I couldn't find cotilla cheese. Cotilla cheese is very similar to feta in its consistency feta has a more tangy flavor than cotilla but you know it's a good substitute if you couldn't find cotilla like i couldn't and then once the cheese is on it's time to add some of that chipotle sauce on that you've made look at that look at those tacos those look awesome oh man they are done they're ready to go but before they are i'm going to scoop myself out some of the salsa verde hair for my tacos and then it's time to go in for a taste test let me give you a close-up shot look at how picturesque and beautiful these are and they smell so damn good so let's go in for a bite and holy are those good wow they were so good man the carne asada like the steak was just nice and tender the marinade just made them so rich and flavorful oh and the pickled onions so good the guac so good everything was so good and nice and tangy and delicious let's try the salsa verde here let's add that onto the taco and Oh, that is nice. There's a nice little heat to it and just a good tang. Oh, you can see Rose. She definitely wants in here. All right, hold on. Let me give Rose a bite here. She clearly wants a bite. There you go, buddy. That was a weird way to bite it, Rose, but there you go. <laughs> and anyways, let's go in for the second taco because the first one went, was so good. And yeah, these were awesome awesome so good you should really try making these at home it took a lot of work but don't get me wrong there was a lot of prep work involved in this but you know what making everything like i did here it was a lot of fun and the end result was so so good i think you'll really like these if you make these at home so you should try it but anyways that is the end of the episode like always i hope you like what you saw here today if you did why don't you drop me a comment like the video or even subscribe to the channel Thanks again for watching Idiot Proof Cooking. We'll see you again soon.